Hi everyone. Today I'm going to do a big square canvas with a very simplistic, stylistic, um, abstract seascape. I wanted those of you who are new to it to feel that you could create a really uh, dynamic painting very easily to give you confidence to move forward. So this is quite a simple concept but it turns out fantastically. So uh, let's have a look at the paints that I'm going to be So here I've got ultramarine blue, the thallo blue uh, and then turquoise and the teal. Underneath from each I've got a pile of the gloss medium. I just take the gloss medium and the paint and mix them together with a palette knife. I'm not mixing the colours together because that's going to happen naturally on the canvas. Wiping off my uh, palette knife in between just so I can keep the piles a little bit clean to start with. I haven't put any white in yet, I'll do that uh, at the next stage. Wipe it off in between and then there's my last pile getting mixed up, the lighter turquoise, which will be in closer to the, the shore. Now once you've mixed in that, work reasonably quickly because um, it can get a bit tacky if you keep trying to work back and forth into it, so we need to now get it onto the canvas fairly quickly. So I take my great big brush, hop it in a pile, and I'm just going to go across the top. And I start off just getting it on. If I don't feel it's going on, if I don't feel it's going on smooth enough, then I might add in a little bit more of the gloss medium. I think I could do with a bit more medium in all of those. So I'll pour that in. This time I'm just giving it a stir around with my big brush. And that would just make it a little bit more fluid going on a little bit better. It takes quite a lot of paint doing it a big canvas so be prepared to invest in a bit of paint if you're going to do a big one but you can do this same one on a small canvas and later on I'll go and do it along the top there right now I'm just working it down And because I don't want to leave um, big brush marks in the middle there, I don't mind about these horizontal brush, brush, brush marks I'm leaving because they're good. They're describing the water and the waves. And that, that's fine to have. But what I don't want is to have that kind of brush mark in the middle, which happens when you go like that and then lift it off there. You get a mark. So I'm... I put the paint on and then I'm just giving it a, a, a full brush from side to side. I'm just popping around the side to make sure I've, I've covered all that. And why I'm getting the marks when I stop is because of the gloss medium in there. If you don't use the gloss medium, you won't have as many difficulties, but you won't have it such a nice glossy appearance. Although you're going to put some varnish on it later anyway. Now I'm going to just quickly mix in over the top of it and, and running down into the next level some of the thallo blue. And that gives me a nice mixture of these dark deeps out here. The edges I find you have to be quite careful with because they tend to get marks on them. I want to start making the 
the wave lines go a little bit diagonally. So diagonal lines. So I'm just going back over them and stroking my brush that way. Now you want to get the top of there, but <coughs> my little um, what I need to do is just lift it up and I lift it forward, lean it forward. Oops. I'll correct that in a moment. Lean it forward. And then I'll just do the top here so that the painting goes all the way around the sides. It will probably get some marks again on that top mm -hmm. where I sit the, the holding tab on it. But they're easily fixed up later. This way I've got made sure I've used the same colour so that there's a nice continu con continuity between the face here and the tops and sides. There we go. Back on there. Just brush that out again. Now I'm going to keep going down. I've got the greener colour to mix in now. So the green starts coming in and again I just stroke some of that through what I've already put on so it's not the predominant colour but it is mixing in and creating a bit of interest in those in that distant sea. And you can see I am running that over there a number of times when I see something that's annoying me, like that little mark there, I'll just pull it back until it's the way I want it to be. Now I'm going to start adding in the much lighter turquoise, oh, sorry, teal. Um, I use an Atelier uh, light turquoise too, but I've run out of that as well. That's what happens when you're getting ready to go on holidays and you just don't keep an eye on your paint. I was quite busy painting before I left on holiday and then came home and thought, oh, I should have got some more of that. If you find the paint's too thick, I think that's going to be a bit thick, but I actually don't mind here it being thicker because what I'm after here is some more body to the wave, so I don't mind it being a bit thicker. And I'll be adding some white down further. How far do I want the water to go? I want it to go two-thirds of the way down. I don't want it breaking in the middle. So it's going to go down to there. That's just a little line to remind me. And you can see there's not a lot of worrying about composition in this. It's just about getting on a really nice mix of colours. And I can add in some other colours. And you can see how I've got a nice, delicious, thick edge there. Just going round the corner again to make sure I get continuity so I don't mind now starting putting in some thicker suggestions of waves there I need some more of that teal so just squeezing a whole squirt more of that out and popping in a little bit more gloss and so I have the gloss and the teal just mixing them up with the brush if you don't have a big art brush like this but you've got a household painting brush that works just as well in fact one of my favourite brushes uh, for doing foliage and so on <laughs> is this really messed up uh, little one inch paintbrush, house paintbrush that I've used and used and it's just has some nice shapes now uh, and I quite like using that. So here I'm, I'm keeping on going down with this and it, as you can see just ladling it on now so it's nice and thick 
and I'm going to start adding in a bit of white in a moment for the the lighter water as it comes. I can also take just a small dab of this and mix it a bit into the background there and you can see you get suggestions of waves. If I take a little bit more and just pull it along, it gives a nice wave top there which I can add some white into later. I'll do the same down here, nice and thick. And we're just going, I'm not, not trying to be, I'm not trying to be too precise in what I'm doing there. I'm just adding it in and letting it work itself out. Now that might be a little bit scary if you're new to it, but it's also easy because I don't like it, I just go in again. And by not thinking about it too much, it doesn't overwhelm you. And you're getting a, a kind of natural look because you're not worrying too much about it. Down here they can be, can be a little bit thicker. And then when I go back over it with white, it'll be like the breaking waves. And as I come in, here, not forgetting to go around your sides there. And of course you can do that on a smaller canvas as you like. You don't even need to do it on a canvas. You can use the same effect on paper, on a piece of board that you've primed. And by priming I just mean using some gesso over it to seal it so that the paint doesn't soak into the surface. So there you can see, how quickly did I do that? How effective is it already? I don't want to waste all this paint here because I have other canvases, I have smaller ones I can do one on. What I'm going to do is just seal it off. By taking the top of my palette lid, putting it on the top, closing it up. And that is going to last for weeks in the fridge. I don't want to waste my paint. Now I'm going to continue uh, with the beach and then I'll be putting the rocks in. The beach part is quite a lot of fun. I'm just going to get out a different palette to use for that. I also want to save that brush for later. So I'm just taking a disposable glove, popping it in there and wrapping it around and I'll sit that on top of the palette. Now I just have a white plate here, plastic plate, and I'll use that for the beach colours. And for the beach I'm just going to use the Naples Yellow. I'm cleaning off my palette knife quite carefully because I don't want the blues and greens to mix in just yet. So I spoon out some yellow. So I've just spooned out the yellow onto there. Or oh, spoon's probably not quite the right word. And now I want a whole lot of white. So I'm just using my titanium white. Sometimes I have to go get a husband to help with this. I know that's a sexist thing to say, all you women out there, but my wrist is a little bit weak, not me. I am strong. I am strong, my, weak is, my wrist is not so strong. So I'm just laying out a lot of white for this. And it gets mixed together, not entirely. I don't want too much yellow, so I'm pushing that to the side. I'm probably going to need a whole lot more white. And I really like this part. I'm just going to get a little bit of uh, a red, oh, an orange. I'm just going to use a tiny bit of orange in here too. You could use red, alizarin, whatever you like. This is just to give it extra colour. And what I do is I'm just going to use a very big, a very big 
I actually have a much bigger one than this, but this one will do for now. I just label it on and then drag my palette knife through it, creating lots of interesting texture there. And using your palette knife does mean you're going to use a lot more paint. But I like the effect it gives. It gives you those ridges in the sand. I just want to scoop out a whole lot more of that white. So I've got a whole lot more white there. Dab of orange in it. Dab of yellow. Now I don't even need to mix it on uh, the palette. I, I can just pick up the two different colours with my palette knife and just run it through. And you can see then I take the very tip of it and scrape it through. And I just keep working it back and forth, not forgetting again the sides. Sometimes I use my fingers to go around the edges, or I might use my hand there, just give it a bit of a rub through, rub it around the edges. And this is where you can really play and do whatever works for you. So I'll just keep going till I've used up all my paint on here and then I'll start making more marks. So sometimes I'll just pick up a bit of yellow and put the straight yellow on. Sometimes it will be a bit of the white and that will go on. Over in this area are going to be some rocks. So I don't need to do too much paint to the beach in that area. And then I can start whipping it through. Just using my fingers around the edge there to make sure I've got a covering of the sand. Now because it's a light colour there, I'm not going to worry about going underneath the bottom of the canvas side yet. That will happen later on, but here I am taking that all across. Sometimes I'll underpaint the whole beach with a purpley kind of colour. And then when I drag this across, it will bring it through. So you can just drag patches a little bit less paint and then some more ridge, thicker bits of paint. And as you put the flat of your blade here and bring it across, it makes a more textured effect. So you can get lots of effects just with the palette knife. Then you can just put a few lines if you want to, like so which sort of simulate the lines of where the water is coming in, leaving little bits of foam, and then you can put the foam in later. Where the water meets the... One thing, one thing with this hand technique is you get pretty awful hands, so I'm just going to go wash those before I continue. As I get into this area, the intermediate area between the water and the sand, the sand's a bit wetter and so I'm adding in a little bit of a mauvey violety colour into that just to give it a little bit of a darker colour and you might like to think about using a brush for that bit. So I'm just taking a brush and brushing in this bit and it brushes right into the sea there, mixing it up a little bit now and you can see it makes it a little bit lighter. And it's mixing everything up.
because that's what happens at the edge where the water meets the, the sand. And by not using the palette knife then I'm making a smoother bit of sand and the smoother it is the wetter it looks. So I'm trying to give it that slick look of wet sand. So instead of using gloss medium at the moment I'm just using a little bit of water in there to thin it down. And then I'm running it back into the running it back into the water and into the sand as well. And that's become my intermediate strip. And you can see it's much more um, much more fluid and calmer. It's got that smooth quality about it. So I've got uh, now I've got all the water done, all the beach done, sand done, and an intermediate strip. I'm going to be adding in some white onto the waist. That's going to wait a little bit there. Um, I've got the rock to add in, so I'm going to put some rocks in here now. And then we'll go back and put in some... Um, well, I can show you what I'm planning to do. I've just picked up a little bit of the, the wet. I'm just going to be running along with some thicker bits of white to make... the breaking waves. So I'll be doing some of those. Mm, I may put some of those in now actually. We'll get the water all done and then we'll add the rocks in. What I do need is a little bit more. What I need now is just a little bit more white. And I'm going to be adding it onto my sand plate um, because I want, don't want it to be pure white at this stage. So I'll add it on there where the violety area is just to create some of the more shadowed aspects of the, the um, waves. And I've got a little bit of green mixed in with it. So I'm just taking the brush and adding it in. You just pull it across and it's going to mix a bit with the wet paint there which is all to the good so we don't get just a straight line of white it's got a little bit of other color mixed in with it and we get a nice that's really nice and thick so we get a nice textural bit there so I can add some a couple of those waves going across And then as they come into shore, I might get a little bit of the foam. So I'm just putting my brush in it and then wiggling it around. Sort of to create a little bit of that, that foamy, surfy, foamy bit. And it's all mixing with the green underneath, which is good. And I'm just squiggling the brush to give me all sorts of different patterns there in the foam because the colour of that water is affected by all sorts of things. Uh, the direction of the sunlight, what's underneath it. Is there white sand or black sand, seaweed, whatever. So I'm starting to get some little bits of foamy stuff there. The rocks are going over there so I'm not putting too much in that area. And then some more of the smaller little wavy bits coming into the shore. If you think you've gone too far, just brush it out with your brush again like so. I didn't quite like that, so I'm just brushing it out. And you get a sense of the sand showing through the wet water there. I can go and do... I don't quite like 
this away here so that's just getting a bit more I thought it was too much the same as the wave in front so I'm just making that a bit different than the wave in front And it will get a little shadow under there of the darker blue later on, but I need it to dry first before I'm doing that. And I'll probably add some more in there, but I want to put the rock in first. So now I've got all that paint. I don't want to lose that either, so I'm going to just take my other palette, sit it on top, and that'll seal in the moisture for that one. And I can keep that one. I've got a lot of palette knives and brushes now that are dirty so they're going straight into a wet container so that they don't get hard and then I can clean them off later except for this one which I want to clean straight away now I'm cleaning this one straight away because it's going to be what makes the rocks so now I have to get another palette for my rocks I don't usually have all these three palettes on the go, but because um, it's three distinct areas, I have just, just decided that's what I wanted to do today. So I've just got a little bit of a wet um, palette there, and I'm going to get the rock, rock out now. So I'm just using a bit of quite dark paint. And I, I won't need too much here because I'm not doing a lot of big, big rocks. It's just going to be some rocks coming in there. Then I'm going to add in some of these earth colours. going to add in I don't want to use black in the rocks but I want them quite dark so I'm adding in a little touch of ultramarine blue into that very dark brown and that will give me a really deep dark color so they just get mixed up there and I'll start by just scraping off some and then deciding where my rocks are going and this is a very arbitrary thing so I'm having I'm going to have it come out from the side and I'm just scraping it on like so and you can see it's very thick and that's what I want here. I want it to be quite thick. I'm not worried too much that I've made a bit of a mess there because the rocks will be overlapping. So here comes another rock going in like that. And I'm just using the sharp edges of my palette knife to give that. I'll be adding shadows down. So all I have to do for that is pull not shadow, sorry, reflections. I just pull from the area of rock I want to be reflected down in there. It's lightened it off because of the pale colours underneath it, but that's a good thing because you, the dark shadows reflections are always going to be, reflections of dark objects are always going to be lighter than they are. And then you can just, I'll be refining those, but then we just pull, we can pull out a little line there to delineate the rocks from the sand and that's just a little bit of reflection there. Down it comes, I can make those a little bit less sharp and I can go in with a smaller one if I want. With the rocks I don't want them to be um, too angular. Oh, well, sorry. With the rocks, I don't want them to be uniform. I don't want them to be pyramids, so I'll have one shorter, one longer side. Um, and I don't want this just to be flat, so for example, I might go in and sort of 
give it a, a more rounded shape there. I might give this some. It's actually easier for me to do it from the other side, so I'm just moving over. Sorry about that. So, beauty of a palette knife is you can just erase anything you want. This palette knife has a rounder edge there and some sharper edge, so the rounder edge is good if you want to go back in and round off some of that rock. Just going to get some more colours out. I have here also a, some flexible modelling paste, that's a Liquitex one, and that will just make the rocks have a little bit more bulk. And you can put that on first and paint over it, or you can just take it. And mix it in with your, your base colours. So here I am just mixing it in. It will lighten them off slightly, but it does dry clear. So that's just going to give a bit more body. To these colours I'm using. I'm taking this knife again and I'm starting again to just, you can see how using the round side, round part of that palette knife gives me a different look to my rocks. And I want that one. coming down in front of it so now I'm just going to, to do that that one you will need to go a little bit further out there now because I've I've made I want to make the peak up there let's make the peak up there so what I'm just doing here is making sure that I've got some nice angular shapes on the rocks so they look like rocks instead of marshmallows. We don't want them looking like marshmallows, so we want to give them some angularity, and that's what I'm just doing, making some sharper bits there. And I can do that with different sides. And I'm taking away the pyramid look too because I'm making that go flat across and that go up further so it gets more of a, a different shape. If I find this is all getting too dark, then later on, I'll just take a straight colour and work back into it. And I can use any sort of colour. So I will probably put in a little bit of, a little bit more of this uh, yellow ochre. Lid. Try and keep the right lids, lids on your various bits and pieces. Okay, so now I've got some yellow ochre, so I can take the yellow ochre and work into it too. And you can see I like these nice thick planes I get, and then you can pull it down and mix the colour like so. A little bit there on that one. And then I want to pull that down. Some of the colours I'll put in there down into the reflections. It will have a little bit of the darker colour as well. And so because they're reflections, they're just getting a pull down. And if I've gone too far, I can just scrape it back a bit. Just dabbing something with my finger as well.
and even though I'm going down I want to sort of get that diagonal effect so it's repeating what's up in there so I'm just pulling it down like so uh, this is a little one down here it's going to just get a little bit of a differentiation from the back there which is darker so I'm putting a lighter color in the front which just helps with um, contrast and, and sorting out which rocks where you again go down like so a little bit more of the red from up there So I've got some rocks in now, just adding in the deep tones back there again. And then I just want to re-emphasise the front rock. Now comes that part where I want to just use the sharp part. And that will help me delineate which rock's going there. So here, got one there. And I'm pulling a little bit of these colours. Down into the water there for some reflections in the water. And then this rock. This round like so. Didn't want that to be too. Ugh. I've gone a bit overboard there, folks. And sometimes that happens, so I'm just trying to get that out and then I'll fix that area. Okay. So the way I'm going to fix that is just to brush in, go back with my beach colours and get a bit of the beach colour in there. So I'll just and I don't mind what I'm trying to do here by taking this brush and just brushing it like so is simulate that edge of the reflections where it's it's down for sure but then it sort of goes across and little bits of the colour wash around into there and over in this one it's just caused we've just got some of the some of the surf coming in around there so I've put little bits in just to remind me what I plan to do but then I'll come back and tidy that up when the underneath is wet it's, it's, sorry is dry because we don't want uh, it to be all sort of brown and dirty to surf. And I'm putting a little bit more of the surf in now this way with just this brush loaded up with some paint dragging it across the very lightly dragging it across. And having done all that, I didn't go around the corner. So I need to just go around the corner with my rock. Using my palette knife there and sometimes my finger just on the edge there.
So I've extended the rock around the side. And I'm just doing my little See how I can imply that the rock's going around. Uh, it's got a bit of a curve on it. That one didn't work quite so well. And you could play around with this forever some point you've got to decide you, you're done but it doesn't have to be now then if I want to have more suggestions of uh, whatever was in there I can just drag my knife through them and you can see that you maybe get the idea of a, a bit of a ripple of water and if I think I've gone too far again it's just pull it down and cover it. So palette knife working quite well there to to allow me a bit of latitude in what I'm doing. And then just going to blur it off at the edges around that side as well. So I, I Blurred off the little reflections there and just doing it around the sides as well. I feel like I need more rocks there, so I'm going to add in a few more rocks out here. Uh, some smaller ones. So it's now just a matter of adjusting it as you go. Do, do you need more rocks, less rocks? And uh, now it's just a matter of adjusting it as you go. I want some more rocks here. Maybe this rock's going to be bigger. And I think it is going to be bigger, so I'm going to take that and just make it a much bigger rock. Thinking about what colour is there, it's a lighter colour, so in the foreground here, this rock is going to be darker. And I need to pull some of that colour down for the sh reflection, so. And then I'm going to put some small rocks out here. Ooh. Adding in a bit of colour. These rocks I'm going to get a lot more dark around the bottoms and I'm going to pull it up so that the base has become much darker.
and then pull some dark down into the reflections. Okay. Just pulling in some I, I see this um how it's gone a little bit dark in there. I don't mind that because what it's suggesting is that there might be more rocks under there. So it's a little bit of a uh, an idea that there's more rocks underneath the surface there. So there are those rocks. Now I think from now on most of the surf is going to be added in later when it's dried a bit. But I do need to Um, blur that off a little bit, a little bit. And I do need to also add in my little edge there. everyone so since the last time you saw this I've actually done some more work which I taped for you but because my LCD screen's broken I didn't notice that the video had stopped so I'll just talk you through what I've done the few changes I've made and give you a quick demonstration of how that goes I'm just going to check that the video is working okay yes. so you've already seen me put in a rock I just put another rock in here and add, add the shadow in because I wanted to balance the composition Back in the foam, I just added in a little bit more of the of some other colours beside the white. So I, I just dragged the brush, loaded it up with some other colour, and dragged it through there to create a little bit of interest in the surf and not have it all the same. You can see what I'm doing. I'm just dragging the brush with a little bit of extra colour on there to vary up that white water a bit. And then I dragged some of it up onto the face of that wave a little bit to show that it's flowing back and forth and then I can just put a little bit more of the, the white in if I want to. So it's just a matter of keeping doing that till you're happy with how it looks. The other small change I made was through here you can see I've put some shadow lines in. I just take a rigger brush and pick up a darker colour and just drag it along underneath the wave. So that just gives me a little bit of shadow underneath the little wave that's there. Then I've added in a little bit of um, seaweed there. Very easy to do. Just take a dark colour, it doesn't really matter which dark. I'll add a little bit more to this one. And you just wriggle it around with your little rigger brush, making sort of little circular motions there. And then I take a little bit of the light colour, just for some highlights on there. And in this case I'm using the same yellow ochre as I have on there. I've added some into the water area. and some onto the sand. 
I also added in some seagulls here. And they're very easy to do as well. I'll just add one down here by the, the sand. So I'm just taking a little bit of white on my rigger brush. And let's put it, put it in here. So we'll stand out against it against there. And I just pull a little dab of it down. And then I take a little bit of the blue that I use for the sky. So a pale blue and add it in on one side for the shadow. And I can adjust that. I think it needs a little bit more of... I don't think I've done... I've got his body in there, but his head's not very good, so I'm just adding in a little bit more white there for his little head. And... can't really see the legs up here, but down here I'm going to give him some legs, and that's just a little bit of orange just dragging down there for some legs and the last thing is just taking a very dark color almost sort of black and giving him that little black tip they have back there so he's in what I need to do is give him a little bit of a shadow though because uh, the sun is shining that way so the shadow will go that's the shadow side in there and the shadow will go just a, a little bit of a shadow there and again I can put a little bit of shadow area around the see we're there just a little bit of darkness and shadow around there okay seagull I'm going to give the seagull's head a little bit of shadow as well there so we've got a little seagull there some seagulls up there and the reason I put those in a, in a seaweed is to bring your eye in and around gives it a little bit of a pathway there the just going to um, make a little bit of surfy stuff through the, the seaweed to where the foam is riding through it. A little bit up here too. And that's just a little bit of white, off-white caught on my, my brush and dragged across there. And I'm using the little rigger brush so I can keep it the more delicate and you can see I'm just putting in a few of those little surfy bits around the rocks there as well and then just running a little bit of the um, sky colour into the edges of the reflections there and then blurring it a little bit with my finger there just so the edges of the reflections are a little bit blurred. Down here I'm going to just finish that part. I'm actually going to do the same up here with the, the sky reflections and it's just to take off the edge of the just blur the edge of the reflections a little bit there pull those ones slightly more across there what I want to do is just put a little bit of surf coming around there too There. Just 
put a little bit of surf in there and that's all happening with my rigger brush so I can keep a bit of control over it and make it a little bit blurred and so on. Okay, now here I just want to have a suggestion of the um, dry sand coming over it. So I'm going to need just a slight amount more of white. Just mixing up a little bit of white, a touch of the yellow, a little touch of the orange. I'm giving myself a little bit of sand there, which I'm then just going to drag across there with my palette knife. And that gives a little bit of suggestion of the drier sand coming in over the wet sky reflections there. So I'll just do a couple of those in that spot. It gives a little bit of sparkle to that area. Add a little bit there. So that just needs to have a bit of a darker base, so I'm going in to make my sea a little bit darker around the base. Then I'll just give it a little top up with a couple of little light reflections off there. Oops. I'm making these the brightest spots on the seaweed where the sun's hitting it. Just going to reinforce that little wavelet there because it got lost a bit when I dragged the, the dry sand across it. So let's give it a bit of a, and it's just again picking up some nice thick white and dragging across there. it done. You can see down here I've signed my name already. I've chosen a blue there and it kind of 
brings that back up into there. I made a wee little mess there when I did it though, so I'm just going back in with a bit of the sand colour and fixing that. If you've enjoyed this, you might consider coming on over to Patreon where I'm doing a whole lot more acrylic lessons uh, and a whole lot of other things related to art. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye for now.